learning how to bake butternut squash is really easy. There are a lot of ways to do it, so I'm going to show you two methods so that you can decide which is best for you. Knowing how to bake butternut squash allows you to make a lot of other recipes, so it's definitely a good skill to know. If you want to learn more, keep watching. The first step in learning how to bake butternut squash is learning how to cut it. I already have a video on how to cut butternut squash, so for a more detailed explanation, I'll include a link below in the description box. However, generally what you want to do is take a large knife and insert it at the top of the butternut squash and push it down towards the base. A chef's knife is ideal, but really any large knife will do. You may have to wiggle it back and forth like I did, but eventually you'll be able to slice it in half. If you want to make cutting the butternut squash even easier, take a knife and poke a few holes or cut a few slits in the peel and then microwave it on high for three to five minutes. That should soften it enough so that you can cut through it even without a chef's knife. Even though it looks intimidating, once you get the hang of it, it's really not a big deal. Even if you don't cut it exactly in half, that's fine. Once your butternut squash is cut in half with the peel still on, you're ready to learn how to bake butternut squash in the oven. Now that my butternut squash is cut, I'm ready to bake it. I've seen recipes calling for putting oil on this part of the butternut squash and baking it. And I've also seen recipes for the butternut squash being put face down in the baking dish and then just putting some water around it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do both so that you can see how they both work and maybe we can compare and contrast. So like I said, for this one here I have a neutral flavored oil, some canola oil. If you want to use butter, you can. But I think if you're roasting it face up, you're going to want to use some sort of fat so that it does not burn. And as you can see, I'm just using a little tiny bit on my finger, probably a quarter to a half of a teaspoon in total. Kind of like that. And then over here, I have a cup of water. I'm just going to put in enough. Okay, I put in three quarters of a cup. You see, let's put it like that. That way there's water all around it. There, I put in three quarters of a cup. Just enough to make sure that it is covered all around. There's water completely surrounding Runner squash. Actually, I'm just going to put in a full cup. So the full cup of water is completely surrounding this piece of butternut squash in this 8x8 baking dish. For this one, I didn't put any oil in the bottom of the pan. I just put some oil lightly with my finger on the orange flesh. I am going to bake this butternut squash at 350 Fahrenheit for at least 40 minutes. Some recipes call for up to an hour and a half, so we'll see, I will let you know. The baked butternut squash is done. They were in at 350 Fahrenheit for an hour and a half. Halfway through, I turned them around. So this part was originally towards the door, and then I flipped it. It's been about 10 minutes since they came out of the oven. These look amazing. And this one with the water, you can tell that it's done because I can very easily pierce the flesh with a fork. It goes in very easily. Now it's time to enjoy.
And one more thing, the butternut squash half that I baked in the water, I did not add any more water. I added one cup to this eight by eight dish and after an hour and a half, it was all gone. Although I rubbed a little bit of neutral flavored oil on the half of the butternut squash that was face up while baking, a few weeks later, I baked another half of butternut squash face up but with no oil. Although it didn't brown quite as much, it didn't burn either. So honestly, I guess that the oil or butter isn't 100% necessary after all. Once the two pieces of butternut squash were cooled enough to serve, I tried to see if I could tell a difference between the half that was baked right side up and the half that was baked upside down in a dish with some water. Although the butternut squash that was baked face up with a little bit of oil and no water did seem to be a little bit more roasted and be slightly more flavorful because of the roasting, the difference in terms of flavor wasn't significant. However, I think that the main difference was in the amount of water. As you would probably guess, baking butternut squash face down with a bit of water results in a baked butternut squash that has a little bit more moisture. If you want to make mashed butternut squash, which I'll do in an upcoming video, that would probably be better, at least theoretically, but honestly, I think you could use either half to make mashed butternut squash. Like I said, both halves were very similar, but if you want to learn how to bake butternut squash so that the flavor is really roasted, I would go with baking the butternut squash face up with a little bit of oil. Even though I'm a southern chef along with an Argentine chef, honestly I think I like butternut squash more than sweet potato. There's something about the subtle sweetness, how it falls apart when it's cooked in a soup, and how its flavor can change absolutely dramatically when it's roasted in the oven. If you want to peel the butternut squash before baking it in the oven, you could definitely do that. That's what I do when I make my butternut squash pie, and not only does it cook faster, it also has an even more roasted flavor. However, if you want to learn how to bake butternut squash halves so that they have a really nice wow factor when you serve them, this is the recipe for you. And don't forget, the peel is edible, so don't throw it away. Now that you know how to bake butternut squash in the oven, you're ready to make my upcoming recipes. So stay tuned. But until then, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye!